All right. Okay, so this section is solving right triangles using angles of elevation and angles of depression. So part of it is exactly the same as Sokotoa. We're gonna solve parts of right triangles. The next step is that some of these right triangles we actually have to set up using real world <laughs> scenarios or word problems, okay? The word Sokotoa is still probably the most important part. So there's two types of angles we're gonna talk about, which is angles of depression and angles of elevation. Depression goes from your eye level or from horizontal down. So if I'm standing on the edge of a cliff and I'm looking down at something, then the angle of depression goes from my eye level down to whatever it is. If you're flying in an airplane, you spot something on the ground. You're in a blimp, you see something. All of those things would be horizontal down. So this is my horizontal line, right? So like imagine there's a person here, let's say. This would be the, horiz the horizontal line from their eye level down would be the angle of depression. Think depressed down, right? Then there's an angle of elevation. So if you think about elevation is rising, right? Elevation would be ground up. So if I'm standing on the ground and I'm looking up at something, the angle of elevation from the, is from that level up, okay? If you're laying on the ground looking at the clouds, you are looking at the top of a building, anything like that would be ground level up. And that would be angle of elevation. So in some shapes, you can see both, okay? This would be my horizontal line. This would be the angle of depression. This would be my horizontal line. This would be my angle of elevation. If you think about those two horizontal lines, they're parallel, right? Are all horizontal lines parallel? No. Yes. yes. So if you remember horizontal lines and transversals, mm -hmm. these angles have a relationship. Do you remember what they're called? What kind of angles are those? So there was, you had alternate exterior, alternate interior, corresponding same side interior. Alternate, alternate interior. Those would be alternate interior. What are true about alternate interior angles when there's parallel lines? They're, the, they're congruent, right? So those actually would have the same measure. If I knew one, I could get the other, okay? All right, so here's just like baby stepping into it. It says true or false, angle two is above the horizontal line. So angle two is here. Is that above a horizontal line? Yeah. Yes, that's true. B says angle two is the ele angle of elevation from the person in the hot air balloon to the bird. No. Here's my person. Here's the bird, right? Is angle two from this person's eye level up to where it seats, sights the bird? Yes. Yeah. Yes, so that's true. C says angle two is the angle of depression from the person to the bird. That's false. Depression would be going down. Good. Depression would be going down. That would imply the bird's below that person, right? The, the bird's above it. And the last one says angle two. Oh, I cut it off. Is the angle of elevation from the top of the mountain to the person in the balloon. So angle of elevation. Again, you're saying from this person to the bottom of the mountain. Is that angle to that angle? No, that's false. Okay. So these, like two and four, would be angles of elevation, and one and three would be angles of depression. Okay, so we're back to solving right triangles. This says, find the value of x, round your answer to the nearest tenth. What's that magical word that you didn't forget over the weekend? Nearest tenth? Sokotoa. Sokotoa. Oh, yes. <laughs> I said, what's that magical word that you didn't forget over the weekend? Yeah. I didn't forget near 10. <laughs> Good. All right. So if this says find the value of X and I give you angle 42, here's my X. Here's the other piece of information I give you, I give you which is the side length that is 70. So in respect to the 42, where is X? Ah, uh, plus it. Where is 70? Adjacent. Which trig function has opposite and adjacent? Tangent. So I'm going to say the tangent of 42 equals the opposite side, which is x, over the adjacent side, which is 70. Now, what do you do when the number's in the bottom? Multiply it. When the number's in the bottom, we multiply. So this would be 7 times tangent 42. 
when the oh because we're going to put those two things together in a minute tangent 42 63 point nearest ten 63 point zero two would be 63 point zero Okay, so now angle 42 to the top, 70 still on the left there, and then X is now where? What's that called? Uh, hypotenuse. So if this was adjacent and that's hypotenuse, which trig function is that? Cosine. Cosine of 42 would equal adjacent, which is, don't do that, 70 over X. Now the number's in the top, so I do what? I'm going to end up dividing this by this. So if I were to put this over 1, cross multiply. Jeez. Just feel the love running through this room. 70 divided by the cosine of 42. 94.19, which rounds to what? If it's one nine, it's what? 94.2. Ninety four point two. All right. It says you sight a rock climber on a cliff at a thirty two degree angle of elevation. Remember, elevation is from horizontal up, right? Your eye level is six feet above the ground, and you're a thousand feet from the base of the cliff. What's the approximate height of the rock climber from the ground? So I already gave you the, the shape, right? But you got to figure out what you have and what you're missing, okay? First of all, it says eye level. So this is eye level. So like if this is a person, sometimes you're going to have to draw it out. Yes, we're going to baby step our way into that. But if we're at eye level, shh, if we're at eye level, then from eye level up is 32 degrees because that's what it says, the angle of elevation from your sight to the top of where that climber is, is 32 degrees. Your eye level is six feet above the ground. So what piece of information is not already on this diagram? The height of this person, right? You, six feet. Which means from here to here is also six feet. You with me so far? Because this is eye level, this is not ground. So if I wanna find, use the information I have, which is this angle, this side, to find this side, once I get this measurement, is it the distance from the ground to the, cli to the climber? It's eye level to the climber. So what would I have to do with that when I'm done? So if I'm gonna end up getting this measurement, but I want this whole thing, what am I gonna have to do? If I gave you a segment and I cut it into two pieces like this and this, and I gave you this measurement, and I said this was six, and I wanted the whole thing, what would you have to do? Oh, divide, subtract. Add. Add, yes? I'm gonna take what I get from this and add the six onto it. You with me? So I have to find X first. How do I find X if I have a right triangle? Good. The X is opposite the 32. The thousand is adjacent to the 32, which is why it's tangent. So the tangent of 32 degrees equals X over a thousand. Numbers in the bottom, so I do what? Multiply, when the numbers in the bottom we multiply. So I get 1,000 times the tangent of 32, which is 624.9. And then we said that that is only from here to here. So to find the distance from the climber to the ground, I have to add on the six feet.
Because it says approximate height, I would say that's approximately 631 feet. So approximately just means to round. Yes. It's, it's just the same thing we were doing disguised with words because I already give you the picture, right? That was tricky because you had to add on the height. But if I had just given you from the ground up, it's exactly the same thing you've been doing. It's just there was words to describe the picture. But the picture's already there. All right, example five says an airplane pilot sights a life raft at a 26 degree angle of depression. So we have an angle of depression this time. The airplane's altitude is three kilometer, kilometers. What is, is, that should be what is, the airplane's horizontal distance from the raft. So now I've got a picture I need to fill stuff in, okay? What goes where? Where would the 26 degree angle of depression be? Right here, 26 degrees, right? Angle of depression would be from the plane down to the raft. So there's my raft, here's my plane. The plane's altitude is three kilometers. Where does that go? On this side, three kilometers. What's the horizontal distance D from the raft? So D goes where? God bless you. God bless you. Now there's only other one other unknown there, and that's this angle of elevation. What do we say is true about the angle of depression at the top and the angle of elevation at the bottom? They'd be the same, so this would also be 26 degrees. So now I've got a right triangle here. Here's my angle. Three is where in respect to that angle? Uh, opposite. D is what? Adjacent. adjacent. What trig function uses opposite and adjacent? Tangent. tangent. So the tangent of 26 equals opposite, which is 3, over adjacent, which is D. Numbers in the top. So we do what? Divide this by that. So D equals 3 divided by the tangent of 26. Huh? Six. And it says round. Let's round to the nearest tenth. Uh, 6.2 kilometers. Questions. So some of them you're going to have to set up a little bit of. We're not going to be scared. It's just, yeah, we're just going to try it. Okay, it's just words. And then sometimes you're going to get given the triangle and you're actually going to have it. You just have to set up your trig function and then solve it. So just don't forget Sokotol because obviously depending on what the side information that you get will determine which of them you're going to use. Again, you need a calculator. Again, you need to keep it in degrees. Okay.